Hey guys, welcome back to the new video on the channel here. This week we had on Bryce Hopple, World Championship qualifier and uh, finalist in 2019 in Doha. He just came off of running 143 and placing second in his first ever Diamond League in Monaco. We caught him right off of the travel back from Monaco and we talked about his training during COVID, uh, what life's been like for him in Kansas, just trying to get back as a first year's professional, but yet going through a pandemic like everybody else is. So it was a really cool conversation. A lot of interesting things to learn about Bryce, uh, his journey, and where he's headed next as he prepares for, for Tokyo 2021 like we all do. So a really cool video. Thanks for Bryce for coming on. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Thank you to all the guests who have come on prior to Bryce as well. I don't say that enough. I really appreciate your time. Make sure to hit that link below as we go live Monday, Tuesday, Thursdays usually, give or take a day or two. Try to get in three streams a week. Do some giveaways over on the Twitch channel. Talk to some guests, play some Fall Guys, play some Warzone. We get all that in over there on the Twitch channel. Link is below. Also, make sure you hit the Discord link. We got a little community going there where we discuss things, bounce ideas off each other, talk about training. And it's a little more personal, a little more uh, individualized than what Instagram or a Twitter message to me would be. Really appreciate all the support so far. Enjoy the video. Have a great day. Thank you. All right, guys, uh, tonight we have a special guest on a Wednesday, a little track talk Thursday on a Wednesday, for those of you who are live. We have the newest member of the Pristine 143 Club, um, almost, almost 142 Club, 143 Club, um, fresh off his trip from Monaco back uh, in his first Diamond League, first trip to Europe. Beamer, you can't, you're ruining the introduction, dude. Hey. You're ruining the introduction, dog. Beamer. <laughs> But no, sorry about that. So we have uh, Bryce Hopple on, um, professional Adidas athlete in his first year pro. Um, what's going on, man? Welcome to the stream. Appreciate you joining us on a Wednesday. But I'll let yeah. you kind of go through your credentials, go through your highlights. Um, you had an illustrious college career at Kansas and uh, kind of talk to us about that a little bit. Yeah, no. Uh, like you said, Ryan for Adidas now, ran for Kansas and this whole past year, shoot, it's just been, it's been crazy because it all kind of just came on at once. Just kind of been riding the high of race after race and kind of improving after that, but dipping the toes in the, in the pro world and trying to get used to that. So <laughs> I don't know, kind of everything's new and exciting right now. So you're a two-time NCAA champ, right? Indoor and outdoor. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how many big 12 titles do you have? How many what? How many Big Twelve titles do you have? Shoot, I don't know. I think like three, maybe. <laughs> yeah, three. I think I got one my sophomore year, and then I got indoor and outdoor my junior year. Did you only run the eight at Big Twelve? Did you ever like step out the four by four or the fifteen or something like that? I ran the four by four for my team. But we always got like third or fourth. I I did my best anchoring that. <laughs> they tried to get me in like the fifteen in the mile, but I was like. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> the double was tough, let alone the, the 15, just kind of being longer and stuff. Yeah, I mean, I think my freshman year, I ran like the 8, 15, and the 5K outdoors just to try to get points for the team, and it was like near impossible. Like my 5K was just like walking, but... Dude, I didn't know you were jumping in the 5K. <laughs> yeah, I ran the 5K. I was running the 5K at Raleigh Relays right after NCAA indoors. It was always like kind of the introduction to outdoor... Um, coach always put me in it yeah. just to kind of like see where I was with strength and um get a gauge for outdoor and it always was like the worst um worst thing yeah for sure did they ever get you, did they ever get you cross country there oh I loved cross country I was um all region twice in cross okay. I loved cross I, I actually like low-key miss cross country somehow some way yeah it's funny because they I I'd somehow made my way onto the like I don't know, they make like posters every year for cross country for Kansas. And I'd I'd make my way onto that, but I think I they didn't even take me to like regionals and stuff for our cross country team. That's just funny. I'd, I'd struggle in the eight K. <laughs> so um we'll just start at Kansas then and then we'll go to Monaco. Um I was gonna start at Monaco, but we'll just we'll just stay on kind of the college Kansas thing. Um yeah. I guess kind of tied into today. You're still coached by your college coach. Um mm -hmm. which Correct me, is not the distance coach at Kansas? Or is he the distance coach? 
he is he is the distance coach but then so like our head coach he kind of like specializes in training 800 guys that's what i I thought because he was like the pan ams coach the year i was on it yeah yeah he is okay Okay. it's kind of weird how it played out i think it's kind of like because i was coming out of cross country and so i kind of got put into that end of things and then i don't know i kind of played from there but i always get that like question asked because everyone's like oh so you're coached by stanley redwine i'm like no i'm actually coached by wit <laughs> so <laughs> who else does uh who else does wit coach does he like help coach other distance guys or is he more like sprinters or like who does he else coach yeah he he trains like he has control of like all cross country and like all the longer distance people gotcha so, like, so he's the distance like, coach yeah red wine's kind of just like the head coach that there's like eight and like four gotcha okay okay makes sense makes sense um what was did you ever run cross like what was your 8k 10k times in college shoot i think my fastest 8k was like 25 low okay that sounds right (laughs) uh and then 10k i think i ran it i ran the 10k once at regionals they took me one year but it was the year they like messed up at our like region meet and they like messed up the distance so i ran shorter than 10k but (laughs) So I was like, kind of, kind of nice at least. So I don't, I don't know what I could do in a 10k, but man, I, I just tried my hardest out there for when cross country season came around. <laughs> there you go. So what was your, what's your kind of summary? What's your story going to Kansas? Why Kansas? Where else did you look? Kind of take us through maybe a, a summary of your um, recruiting process and kind of walk us through that a little bit, maybe. Yeah. So it was, it's kind of weird. I didn't really come on to like the faster times until like my senior year of uh my high school career but it was kind of it was kind of tough like i i wanted to get in like texas and like some of those other texas schools but none of them were showing like crazy you grew up in you grew up in midland right or like in texas right yeah yeah so like it would have been nice to like stay in texas but like none of them really interested and i i guess i didn't really have any allegiance to any of those texas schools either because my parents were both like from other states uh but no then i did well like the i don't know one of those like junior olympic meets and the Kansas coach was there and i like kind of got the call from them and then ended up like going for a visit and everything and then, i don't know something about coach wit and the team i was just like all right this is a place that i belong and kind of just went from there i think that's like crucial because last night i had on um i had a guest on last night who threw at oregon while ari was there and now he coaches a Division three school. So we're kind of talking about the difference between Division one, Division three, But we kind of mm-hmm. focused a lot on just the recruiting process in general now and how, one, it's changed since we were recruited um, just in, yeah. like, four years, the difference of it. And, two, like, how you really have to find a school that, like, you have that click with. And it has to be, like, outside of, like, the actual performance part of it. Because, like, if you think only of like the coach's credentials or the philosophy or like the training part of it, you don't think about the academics or whether you're happy there or whether you feel comfortable there or whether you, that's it. Like how you said, like that staying of like, that's it. That's how I felt at Akron. Like you're never yeah. going to be successful on the track, no matter what you do, you know? Yeah. I definitely like, wasn't even really that knowledgeable of like what track programs were like historic and stuff, like who were the current good teams and stuff. So I was kind of just going into it blind and then kind of feeling out wherever I liked. <laughs> what was your, so what was your, um, you got recruited, um, you committed before your senior season or during your season, senior season? So I did it like the first possible date, like whenever you're eligible to commit. So I think it's sometime my junior year, maybe. Like, so what was your junior times? Season. Like what did you get recruited off or what were you getting recruited off of your junior year? It's like 153, I think I was doing most of my recruiting off of. And that's like the time I had committed at and stuff. Gotcha. And then I didn't run like 149 until like the very last my like state championship my senior year. So Kansas theoretically got a bargain off of you. I didn't know you were <laughs> 149 in high school. Yeah, no, pretty much. Because <laughs> every Big 12 school would have been like hopping on you at 149. <laughs> they yeah, would no, not. I... They would not let you go for sure. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. Because like I'm like hour and a half from Texas Tech, so that was like kind of one of the schools that was pressing for me. But I wanted to get kind of further away from further away from home. I hundred percent agree with you on that one. Hundred percent agree with you. I was like four hours from home, so it was like perfect. It was like perfect distance. Whereas like I wasn't too too far. Like you're like you're pretty far. Like Kansas, Texas, like you're pretty far. But like four hours for me was like the limit of like the closest I would go to home. 
like Ohio State was kind of recruiting me, and I'm like, nah, like this hour and a half, that's way too close. <laughs> yeah, like Texas Tech was basically like a second high school for me because like all my like everyone was going there, so it would have been like same groups, not really <laughs> branching out to new people or anything. So <laughs> yeah, I see what you're saying. So what was your biggest adjustment in training wise going from high school to college? Like what was your high school training like compared to college and what was something that you like took as an adjustment or what's something you learned in that adjustment period that you can maybe pass along to some people? I think definitely like consistency in training. Uh, yeah. In high school, I feel like I was kind of just like, I mean, we had, we had a really good coach uh, and he was like kind of like getting me into running, but like I just had no clue what I was doing. And so I just kind of like followed along with that. And I think the biggest change was like me actually trying to learn from the sport and like learning from my fellow like collegiate runners and stuff and like my coach. I think really kind of like doing that helped me, I guess, a lot. Because like before, I don't know, I was just like following along with what I was told, I guess. But and then <laughs> no, I agree. I like, like it's an adjustment, like physically and mentally, and the yeah. intensity wise. But I 100% oh. agree with you. I think to to this day, like I always draw myself back to like consistency over like trying to like get like high peaks out of training. If that makes sense, like I would rather yeah. like theoretically like take a workout back a couple notches and get through it 100 percent healthy and come off of it ready to go for the next one then like kill myself in a workout and then not be able to yeah. do a workout for like a week so yeah, that's one of the funny things is my coach like he used to joke early on with me being at kansas because like i sucked at doing workouts like i could <laughs> barely make it through any of those stuff and like all my like teammates like i mean they'd be like dragging me in the workouts but then i somehow just like pulled off a race as well so i never i never understood that part but oh man workouts definitely kicked my butt what's your yeah. um so i have a question so a lot of people ask about like if you ever have like a big break or injuries like you had a pretty like consistent college career especially towards the end of it um where you're yeah. running a lot of races did you ever have a time where you were injured or took a long break? Like, what was that adjustment period to come back from, like, a long break for whatever reason you took the break for? What was kind of your your process mentally and physically to come back from a break like that? Yeah, I think one of the things that was, like, kind of scary was it was my freshman year. Uh, and it was, like, just going into the, like, into the track season. I was, like, my knee was getting pretty messed up from, I guess it was, like, we don't have a great indoor track at Kansas, so the turns are pretty tight and it's flat. So I was, like, my knee was killing me. I think I was out for like three weeks, just like right at the beginning of track season. I was like, oh man, like I'm not going to be able to get to run. And like, that was pretty scary, but I just kind of like stayed with it. And I had like, I think I ran like a PR after like I came back from the recovery from that. So it was like kind of weird, like how quickly it turned around. But then, I don't know, coming from that injury, like thinking like, oh man, I'm about to miss the track season and then kind of doing well after I just like right get back was kind of like what got me excited and like a weird introduction to college track and field I guess <laughs> so during those three weeks did you have days where you maybe like really down on yourself or like getting kind of negative about it or thinking like super like oh, I'm not going to be able to come back from this or like this is like then what I signed up for like yeah. and if you did like how did you get through those kind of like negative days I think the big thing was like I was back home because I went back home for the Christmas break. I was like, I remember thinking, like, uh, yeah, like, kind of like those thoughts, like, oh, maybe, like, I'm not cut out for, the like, the college running and stuff. And then I think it was, like, my coach that kind of, like, just really, like, made me, like, oh, just, like, don't worry about it. Like, it's just it's just a little thing that's nagging you, and you'll be, you'll be good to go soon. Uh, but I think that really, like, helped from my coach – and like just try, like sticking with it and like just injuries like aren't the end of the world you just kind of gotta get through it and then you'll be good but i think that's I, definitely what I'm it's a good thought of like it's not the end of the world and i think when you're injured too like keeping that communication with your coach is like yeah. really crucial um what got you into the 800 like what got you in track what got you into the 800 when you were younger like coincidence yeah. or did you just like your parents are on or like what was uh what was kind of no. the i was curious to hear what people's intro to track was it's weird so yeah so i ran like i played soccer like all my life and up until my sophomore year in high school and it was like that summer of sophomore year our coach uh our soccer coach was like hey like y'all need to go to cross country and like stay in shape over the summer 
so then I like went and did that and then, like that's kind of like when I started figuring like oh like I kind of like this running thing and it was that group of friends that kind of like started getting me onto running and like kind of teach me all this stuff and then so that also that summer I was like I went to go run like the USATF stuff with them and uh I think I was doing like the well I ran like one meet my freshman and sophomore year each year in track and I was like a 400 runner at the time and then cross country kind of got me more into like the longer distance stuff and uh so I, I went for like the 1500 at that that summer like it's like the olympic junior olympic thing again yeah did you the, yeah yeah i ended up making it to like the final in the 1500 and i was like oh shoot like what like that's kind of like when i was like track thing is like maybe i'll like consider it so then that next year i like transitioned and I was like, all right, I'm going to just run, like, track instead of soccer my junior year. And it was my high school coach. He's like, hey, like, you're a 400 runner. He did well in the 15. And then the 8 was, like, just right there in the middle. Right in the middle. So, like, hey, yeah. like, you'll be good with this. And then, yeah, ended up being pretty good. <laughs> so you didn't run – did you I mean, did you do both then, soccer and cross? Or did you not do cross in yeah. high school? Uh, I did – I started cross my sophomore year. Or is cross is cross a fall sport in Texas or a soccer a fall sport in Texas, right? So you're yeah, both in the so same it, season. Yeah, you basically only get to run like the district meet if you play soccer. So it, like takes up all of track season. So I only ran like one meet my freshman and sophomore year. Gotcha. Maybe like gotcha. two my sophomore year. Okay. But it's kind of like an either or thing. Yeah, I did. Uh, I started in soccer. Like that was what, like, if you go back to all those like elementary, like, what do you want to do? Like it was all like division one soccer player, division one soccer player. But like our soccer program was like God awful, like horrible. (laughs) Like, and I mean like my running program wasn't much better. Anyway, I had seven guys on my cross country team, but the soccer program was like really bad. So I had to kind of, uh, I knew I wasn't going to like make it to college at any level in soccer just because like my school was never going to get a single, single recruit looking or a single recruiter looking at that at all. Yeah, no, it's it's weird because like pretty much like all my friends in high school, like a lot of them went off to play like college and soccer, and I'm not kind of like a last minute switch to track and then. It, I mean, it's it's paying off pretty well. I mean, yeah. world <laughs> qualifier, which in your credentials you left out, world world finalist last year, um, in Doha, oh, yeah. and second in your first diamond league. I mean, you left out two pretty big credentials, <laughs> but yeah, so. Okay. I got a couple questions from chat about the training before we kind of move on to maybe some off the track stuff and talk about Monaco a little bit. Um, yeah. What was your favorite workout or what is your favorite workout? Man, there's this one workout that we do. I don't know if I, I wouldn't say it's my favorite, but it's, it's the one that's been working. Uh, it's I like, thought we were talking about that on the workout yesterday. We were talking about <laughs> like somebody was like the guy I was training with um, was a guy on the team at Akron and he was like, what's your favorite workout? And I said it and then, my coach like Lebedi was biking behind me and he's like what about that workout and i'm like coach that workout is something that i don't enjoy that i will always (laughs) complain about before during and after but i know is a key integral part of me being successful and i will always do it but i will hate it so i feel like that's this kind of workout (laughs) it is it's so it's like we do it pretty like close to like racing time and it's like a five three two and like you do that and then like a set and then another five through two and it's just Dude, super bro, fast you stole stuff. my uh you stole my workout oh really i do <laughs> five three two with but we do short rest between the five three two yeah it's like ridiculously short it's rest. like a hundred meter jog yeah yeah i think your coach took it from my coach i'm gonna i'm gonna call him and be like no <laughs> exactly killed- dude. that workout like I was talking about it we were talking about it in 2016 i did that i did a five three two and we were on like the third set of it and it always we always started with like 200 meter rest 150 to 100 and it started off pretty like reasonable at the beginning and then went on and yeah. i had a 400 kid pacing me over the summer and he has no I, 400 guys for the most part have zero sense of pace you know yeah like they just go like <laughs> and he took me through the 549 two and then like a hundred meter jog and coach is like, yo, you can run sub 36. And I'm like yelling across the track, like, no, I can't. No, I can't. <laughs> and he's like, you can't, you can't. And I like got through the workout. And at that moment I realized like, wow, I'm kind of in shape. Like this is like, <laughs> it was like one of those workouts where like, you get done you're like, wow, that workout was God awful. But like, I realized like I'm in pretty good shape now. Yeah. Uh, 
I always like kind of get like sad that I have to do that work because just it hurts so bad. <laughs> like, Dude, right, you I'll like <laughs> you get the text. I get the text that like that's the workout coming up, or I see it on the like sheet, and I wake up in the morning, and I'm I'm like so excited to go to bed. I'm so excited to wake up, and then when I realize what I actually have to do. I'm like, damn, like this is gonna suck. Like, there's no way around this. The first thing, the first time I got it too, like I was like, oh, this isn't bad. Those are like pretty short intervals, and then, man, it was a wake up call. <laughs> but like the 500s okay on the first set the 300s yeah. okay 200 kind of sucks and then as the sets go on it's like the last 200 of the 500 the last 150 of the 300 and then the last like 200 it's just like you feel like you're like, i feel like i'm running just like yeah. oh i'm going all out in the last 200 it feels like <laughs> we're all trying to hit the hit the times that he prescribes and stuff. exactly um <laughs> So what was your mileage? What's your mileage from high school to college? And uh, what's your longest run? That's like the two things that like always come up in chat. <laughs> so I think I couldn't even tell you my mileage in high school. It was like maybe 35. Same. same. <laughs> like, I, I, that's a guess. I say I, 30. I, I say 30 to 35, but it easily could have been like 15 for all I know. <laughs> for all. And I think through college, like I was... I was supposed to be, so I still haven't like had this conversation with my coach. I'm supposed to be like 50, 55, but I think realistically I hit in like the 45 range. Okay. <laughs> so do you do a, do you do a longer run on Sunday or Saturday? Yeah. So like I do like 10 miles Sunday. That's gotcha. like that. Uh, but my longest run ever. So one time I forget what it was. I was like upset after a race or something. So I ran on my long run. I ran 14 miles. So I've never run 12 miles like in a single run but i ran 14 one time <laughs> that's that, that was my longest run that works frustrated about something so uh, leading up to monaco um i think there was a lot of people and even like i saw it and i saw a couple people say it after and i kind of chuckled about it i was mm -hmm. wondering how well you would do because you haven't raced 110 times prior to that yeah so what was your going into monaco how did you did you change anything going into it knowing it was kind of like your first one off race or did you just kind of go into it excited training's been going well kind of take us through the last like i guess four or five months of what's what how your training's been and then and, and leading right up to monaco what kind of your thought processes was going into it yeah so like early on in the year i was like hitting the training just like all right it's gonna be another season hopefully it's still kind of like early on like we didn't really know what's going on with the virus and stuff so like all right, I'm training. I'm I'm hitting it hard. Like I'm just gonna plan like there's gonna be a normal season, and then it like got worse and worse. And I was like starting to lose motivation, so the workouts like weren't going as well and stuff. So I was just like trying to stay on top of it, but like it eventually got to the point of like, oh man, like I don't think we're gonna run this year. So I kind of like started letting off a little bit, and uh, so I kind of like took a little break. And I don't think I really told anyone yet, but like I got sick for a little bit. So I had to like take off and that was like, I took off like a week and a half. Um, that was like early July. So like, I was like not on top of the training right there. And then I had to like, all of a sudden like, Hey, like you're going to be in Monaco in a month. So then me and my coach was like, all right, we need to start booking it. Like start getting ready for this. Okay. So, uh, we like, I had to like jump on top of that. I feel like my whole mindset like for that was like I, I need to get in shape as fast as possible or not in shape but like get ray sharp as fast as possible so like i feel like i was like on crunch time because yeah like i didn't have that races to like feel like i was ready or like anything prior to feel like i was ready so i feel like i was just like trying to sharpen up and then even like before the race and stuff um i was like kind of doing more speed than i would normally do like the day before the race just because like i need to get ready for this <laughs> like my legs aren't going to be ready or something uh but no like I, before i traveled i was like telling some of my friends here i was like yeah like i have no clue what i'm gonna do in this race <laughs> sometimes that's like the best you know when there's no pressure you don't have any expectations and you're kind of just running like super free super relaxed like i mean yeah. if you went and ran 148 or if you went and ran 141 <laughs> like you know what i'm saying like it, yeah. yeah, you know, obviously the positives would outweigh if you ran a bad race, but still if you're in a bad race, like no one's gonna be like no one's gonna write you off, you know? Or you're not gonna write yourself off over like a, a bad race in the middle of COVID. So um what was kind of the hoops you had to jump through to get to Monaco? Because I know that there's obviously 
my agent talked about me going over there, but there was like, I kind of tuned out after like 30 seconds of what he was telling me you had to do to get there. So it was kind of the process for people who don't know. It was a process for you to get to Monaco when you got to Monaco and kind of all the way up until like the gun goes off. What was like the COVID procedures for you to, to be able to even race? Yeah, like we had to, so like before traveling, it was kind of weird because like we had to like send off like saliva samples. Like we had to have two tests within 72 hours of traveling. So it was kind of like, and I didn't have anyone to like, I guess some athletes have like a lab they can just send it to like when they're close by. But I had to like FedEx it like same day and like try to get it there as quickly as possible. So that's kind of like weird to have to deal with like getting those tests like sent to like some lab. I, I, I didn't even know. I think it was Idaho or something. So that was kind of weird. And and then like getting to the airport, I had like so many paperwork, some like so much papers from my agent to like, and I was like almost convincing like the American Airlines people like, yo, like I need to like, I need to go. And they're like looking through some of this stuff. And I don't know, it was kind of weird. And then obviously, like once we got there, they did like we just did one test, making sure everything's good. But I don't know. It was it was with it being my first time to Europe, it was just like kind of scary to have to like go all through that stuff. <laughs> so you so you had to come because American Airlines wouldn't let you on the flight unless you had like a legitimate reason to go. Yeah, so they I forget what was all in that packet, but it was literally like a paper from like the meet, like saying I was invited. And then there was like, I don't know what, I didn't read it, but there's like a paper from like the US embassy or something. And then there's like a paper from like for the French government to like go through France or something. And it was like, I was looking through it. I was like, I, had, I don't know what to look on this page. Just, and <laughs> Just kind of hand it off like, and go on. Yeah. And so, yeah, that American Airlines dude, or yeah, they were like asking me like all the reasons and stuff. So you had to like have legitimate reasons to like get out of the country and stuff because um, it was it was weird. I was just hoping that everything went smoothly. <laughs> so, what do you consider? Do you think you're? This is it from a from a chat. Do you think your your big PR in Monaco? Did you expect it? I guess we kind of talked about it. Did you expect it, or do you consider it a big surprise? Uh, I wouldn't say I expected it. I was like, I feel like I compete well when I'm get when I get put in with that good competition, but it definitely wasn't expected. I think I'd surprised myself a lot of time. And that's kind of what I was saying with like this whole 2019 past season is like each race that it just went longer and longer. was like, man, like I kept like surprising myself, like, cause it's, it's hard to like see yourself being at those like levels. Like I remember when I roomed with you at Doha, I was like, shoot, like that's Clay and Murphy. Like I was, I was looking, like I look up to you and everything. And I was like, it's you surprise yourself when you when you do stuff like that. So I think it was definitely kind of definitely a surprise. I think there. I think if you if you don't surprise yourself, like sometimes it's like you don't have the right mindset going into it. You know, I think sometimes you have to kind of like you have to run with that free mindset of like I'm not sure what to expect. So you kind of just don't have that pressure on yourself because um, I think I think you can do a really good job as a track and field athlete it's a lot easier than i think other sports because it's not as mainstream you can block out a lot of like the outside pressures like a lot of the media pressures aren't like super super like intense like i mean you can block out the let's run of the flow tracks pretty easily you just don't get on the sites you know you block them on twitter like you can block those like outside pressures like as an athlete in a high pressure situation like out you can like eliminate like talking to people who you don't want to talk to like it's really easy as like a track and field athlete to isolate yourself but the problem for me sometimes I see is like, I get pressure on myself, you know, like I, I put that, like I set that bar, I set that standard. But when I say like, I can achieve this, but I'm not going to like set a standard to do it. Like yeah. prior to the race, it's almost easier to run the standard. If you don't expect exactly what you're saying, expect it. Yeah. No. Yeah. I'd say the same. Like that is one of the biggest things is like, you don't want to disappoint yourself, <laughs> but I don't know. So are you okay? So someone asked in chat, do you attribute your PR to V8? No, I know that is your favorite pre race drink. Do you drink the V8 energy drinks? Oh, I think I know who said that. I think it was my roommate. Uh, so that, do you drink them? Because that's like really funny because that's what we used to drink in college. Like we used to like that was like the Bible drink to us. I, I don't drink it. So it was my freshman year in my like freshman dorm with my roommates. And uh, <laughs> we had like some V8s in the, in the pantry. And I was like, yo, like I've never drank one of those. And they're like, what? Like, have you never had one before? And I'm not a big like 
vegetable guy or anything. So <laughs> when I tried it, I about threw up when I – oh, that was the – probably one of the worst things i've ever tasted dude we used to drink the v8 energy drinks it's like it's all it's like juice it's like v8 juice like fruit juice like it's not like vegetables but we were like we was like biblical to us to like we used to fly with this like we used to like we used to buy a case of it and put it in like ziploc baggies and like wrap it up and like put it in our in our bags to like get it to meat so we didn't have to buy it when we got to meats like it was like that's funny that's what i thought (laughs) so you've done monaco you're back in you're back in Kansas or wherever you are in the U.S. Um, what's next for you? Are you are you in an off season? Are you going to race again? Are you going to run a five k cross country? Like what what's the next couple of weeks and months look like as the twenty twenty season kind of wraps up? Uh yeah, so I think I'm gonna get in like hopefully one or two more races. I think they're both gonna be back over in Europe. I think we're waiting to hear like what's going on with Drake. They might be trying to put on a pretty good race. Uh, but no, I feel like. After after having that race, I was like, I want to try to go faster. <laughs> but uh, that was kind of weird because like normally you have like the pinnacle race, like the U.S. Championships or something, to to end your season with. So it's kind of weird. I don't really know to know when you're done. <laughs> um, what one last question about Monaco? Unless chat has any more. What was like the new surface at Monaco? Like, what's it race like? The race at Monaco and the track, the surface, the the facilities. Like, obviously like historically wise, like it's one of the fastest ever. Um, yeah. and I've unfortunately never had my training and timing lineup to be able to race there. Um, uh, I was supposed to run a 15 there and it like didn't like happen last year, but what's kind of like, what, what's it like for people who don't haven't been there? Me. Yeah. Um, and chat, like obviously they, they haven't been there, but they've seen all the times they've seen the historic races, the, the Kip Rops, the Moe's, the ever the chep to guy, five K world record. Now, like, all these things like what what's monaco like yeah so i think uh, you're saying like the surface thing like obviously it's like a new track it's nice and bouncy but i, I feel like those don't like make huge of a, huge of a difference i think it's more of like an atmosphere thing like the atmosphere atmosphere there is like it's incredible like that whole diamond league thing and just everything is so exciting to get in and i think just kind of like the buzz of the crowd and like all the athletes out of there and everything is kind of like that that that's like what gets me going at least uh but monaco is like a beautiful place and it was just cool being there just in general so i think all of that excitement and like kind of like all the hype around the meet is what brings those fast times rather than like more physical things like the the tra- new track and stuff but yeah it makes sense know, it might just be me. <laughs> makes sense no no it's, it's also kind of like you've been in like everybody's been in like quarantine for for yeah. for lack of better terms and then you go to a facility like that where it's like somewhat normal you know like it's kind of yeah. like an extra boost of excitement 100 percent. see what you're saying especially like i couldn't imagine like europe without being normal like europe in a normal race is probably i would say like i watched some of the monaco race, or races like that facility would have been obviously packed and have been even more bonkers like I couldn't imagine yeah. like you're you're gonna be blown away like in your first year race when it's like back to normal and it's like just beer going everywhere, betting going everywhere, like like life's good <laughs> at a European track meet. Dang. Yeah, like that's still stuff I have yet to experience. Like obviously I think tracks on the come up here in the US, but even just seeing that like got me super excited. Kinda like the limited of the crowd and stuff. <laughs> exactly. So I want to talk about a couple of things going to the future through 2021 and then we'll do, I'm kind of letting chat drop a few questions for, for rapid fire at the end here. Um, a few like right. quick questions at the end, but what's kind of, obviously I would probably go to guess that the, the Olympic trials in Tokyo circled pretty big on your, put pretty big on your goal sheet and, and in the, in the front of your mind, what's your, uh, thoughts going into next season? Like, um, your first Olympic, like Olympic trials, like it, what's kind of your initial thoughts going into it especially coming off of well coming off of this season of like a quarantine season but also you running huge pr going into it what's kind of uh where's your mind at going into it goals everything like that yeah so i think obviously goals is like make the olympic team but like how my mind is going into it this whole like i thought i needed like a ton of races to like run well because like that's that's what happened with like that past 2019 year so after like hitting a huge pr off like my first race or whatever, I think it definitely changes my mindset looking forward for the season. It's like, oh, like, I don't need to get in 
20 or 30 races in a row to do well. <laughs> uh, but I think just staying healthy and staying fit is just one of the huge things. And I'm trying not to like hype myself up or uh, like get too, uh, I don't know. It, you can like easily scare yourself and be like, oh, this is the Olympic year. Like you have to do well. So I think just trying to think of it as another year and staying healthy uh, is kind of like the mindset that I want to go. Consistency, consistency, as we talked about earlier. So go. what's something, this is kind of ties back to an old question that I missed. What's something that you feel like you need to do away from running that will help you make the Olympic team or is something that you learned to help your improvement and your progression over the years? It's like kind of maybe something that a lot of people don't think about or that you've done differently to kind of help um, like a high school kid or a college kid that wants to continue to progress like the way that you have? For me, like one of the things that I realized is like to realize like all the support around you, like whether it be like family or like friends or just like even your teammates that you're like running along with and kind of just like enjoying just like the time that you spend with them. Like, I don't know, <laughs> that kind of like sounds cheesy, but like, just finding the joy in that and competing like whatever level of track you're in, whether it's high school or college, just kind of like enjoying those moments. And it kind of like flies by, like it doesn't last forever. Like college was amazing and I loved it, but like you move on to like bigger things. So you just kind of enjoy all the support and the people around you is kind of one of the big things that helps me uh, kind of push along and move on to new things. Gotcha. No, I like hundred percent agree. hundred percent agree that like, Track's a 24-7, 24-7 job, so you got to kind of enjoy life outside of it. Otherwise, track isn't going to be enjoyable either. Yeah. So, all right. Let's do a few random questions here off the wall, rapid fire. Some are track, some not. Um, some I'm going to make up as we go, and then we'll, we'll, we'll let you go for the evening. Um, what is your favorite venue or meet or track that you've run on? I feel like I can guess that one. Monica was... I was gonna say Monaco's got to be probably top couple. But like, what's crazy is Eugene. That place is. Yep. There's I'm so excited to go next year. Oh, I know the the trials are gonna be insane. Like Hayward before, I think the historic Hayward Field was that was just something special to be on. Uh, so I, I think that one holds like a special place in my heart because that was like the first time that I really felt like the energy of the crowd. So. I don't know. I think that might be one of my favorite venues. What uh, did you pay attention to the pacing lights at all at Monaco? I didn't know those were a thing. No one told me that was a thing. <laughs> so I, did you? Did you know? Do you know anything about them? Then did they even talk to you yeah. about them? Oh, I saw. Well, I realized it later when they had it for like uh, the world record, in the five k. Uh, I don't know if they had it for your guys' race because I actually missed your guys' and watched the replay right after it happened. Um, yeah, but I've seen him at like I saw him like last year, like Hangalo and stuff like that, where it's like it's like on pace and stuff like that. But chat was like we were discussing it last night. And I think it's cool, especially because like on TV, like it, it gives you a really good perspective. But like on the track, it really doesn't. Yeah, maybe like, the pacer is paying attention to it, but like I feel like that's so much to look at and like look down at and yeah. try to find where you're at comparative to it while you're racing. Like I don't think that really would play that much of a factor. Yeah, one of the funny things was was like I remember in that race I like locked on to Brazier because I was like playing just like all right, just stick on him, and then I don't really really remember anything else about that race. <laughs> exactly, like, super simple. I just remember right. looking at him and I was like, all right, <laughs> all right. Are you a run gum guy? Run gum? No, I've, I've never tried it. Okay. I've, I've thought about it, but no, I've never tried it before. What's your uh, favorite pre race meal? Favorite pre race meal. I think just the simple uh, spaghetti and meatballs. That's like the go-to. Not a bad one. Uh, who's on your pre-race playlist? Pre-race, I feel like it's a lot of Kodak and Young Thug. And sometimes if I'm feeling like a more calm mood, I'll like go to like the oldies, like Elton John and stuff. But that's like the... So the someone asked, uh, we'll do a B question to that. Young Thug, Gunna, or Little Baby? Young Thug, for sure. <laughs> Uh, how big are your feet? Someone wants to know. How big? Uh, uh, wear a size 11. <laughs> All right. Same old size feet. Favorite Kanye album? Uh, shoot. I think Life of Pablo. There you go. That's not a bad one. Not a bad one. Not a bad one. Um, let's see here. I got probably. What's your favorite car? 
Like, what would you your dream car. car? Your dream car, I guess. Oh, a dream car? Definitely, like, the for the 458 Italia, the Ferrari. That's, like, okay. that car is just beautiful. Okay. It's not, like, big and mean, but it's just, like, finesse. <laughs> and uh, what's car. your favorite sport now? Soccer, obviously, growing up. But what, what about now? What's your kind of your favorite sport outside track and field? Uh, I've been big into NFL. Like, just, like, fantasy and, like... Being here, in, yo, Kansas. When Kansas City won the Super Bowl, everything was crazy here. Like we stormed the streets and everything. So I, NFL is definitely big, uh, big on the list. So who's your <laughs> but, team? Uh, or your players, or like what's kind of your who? Who do you follow the most? I think I follow Kansas City the most now, just because like it's in the area and like I don't know. That's what everyone's going for. Uh, but I think Cowboys is kind of like who I was more more focused on. The growing up and stuff <laughs> so you never you never got into baseball you don't follow baseball isn't that kind of in your in your in your family baseball yeah it is. so like i won't say i got like burnt out on it i loved being like at the baseball field just i don't know that's like my childhood is what it felt like it's like growing up around that baseball field and stuff but i don't know i never got big into like following any of the mlb teams Who's your um? Who's your who's like the coolest person you met growing up? Did you meet anybody cool? Like being down on the oh, field, yeah. or being in the clubhouse. I've met a few. Uh, there's been some big players, but like, I don't know. I've been to like, there's like this thing that my dad goes to. It's like the winter meetings stuff, and there'll be like some big names there. Like I've met Nolan Ryan and like Roger Clemens. Uh, I forget. Like it's there's quite a few like big MLB players that I've met. Uh. But then there's like, I think there's a local Midlander that played for the New York Yankees, uh, Randy Vlardy. And I don't know, I've met quite a few big baseball players. <laughs> Those are the ones I can name off the top of the head real quick though. Not bad, not bad. All right, last question, and then I'll let you go. If you could race anyone in their prime, and you be in their prime, mano y mano, 